I think we can all agree this brave new world we're living in kind of sucks. From masks and social distancing to food rationing and toilet paper quarters, it's a little unreal. But you know what's worse than being in a quarantine? Yep, the big C. I'm trapped in my home with my loving family and awesome roommates, but I need to escape, and I'm using my creativity to set me free. Hey guys, Quarantine Cancer Cutie here. I just got back from raiding the 99 cent store, and I got all sorts of swag for very little cash. What I'm gonna do is I am going to, as the Irish say, dicky up the front door. I want it to look a little more festive for the holidays. In Southern California, we don't get seasons. The only way we really get a, a difference of seasons and transitions is by the little decorations that we put around. Step one is you need to go ahead and you need to cut the stems off of the leaves and the stems off of the flowers. So we really only want to deal with this part and break them apart. The next step that we're going to do is using floral wire. We're just gonna put these together into one long garland and I'm just gonna kind of mix in different colors with the leaves. I'm gonna actually have leaves, flowers, some fabric is coming, some ribbons coming. So this is gonna be a really fun project for me to do and just kind of pop on some, some holiday movies and get in the mood for fall. I have quite a long garland going now to the point where I have exhausted my six foot countertop. I have a ton of these little one inch coffee hooks. I'm gonna put these around the front door. It'll make putting garlands up and taking them down so much easier. I have successfully mounted all the coffee hooks along the edge of the door. Step one is done. I have got my leaf garland assembled and hung around the door. Next step will be the flowers. The garland with the flowers looks pretty amazing. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love this little table I purchased years ago at Home Goods. It's metal, it's unique in its appearance. It's perfect for having right next to the front door. When we have DoorDash or Postmates delivered, they just leave our food right on this little tray. It's kind of a nice little thing to have in this new day and age. What I like to do with this little table and actually all my metal outdoor patio furniture is every couple of months I wipe it down using Lucas Oil Penetrating Oil. You simply spray a little on a paper towel, wipe away, it removes dirt, it removes grime, protects from rust. And as I said, this table has been outside for, gosh, two, three, maybe even four years. And there's really no rust or damage to this. I purchased this really cool outdoor fabric from fabric.com. I'm not exactly sure what the name was because it was over the summer that I bought this, um, thinking I would do that project then, and it's actually mid-September now and I'm finally working on it. But the reason I really like this pattern, if you can see, they're not perfect black and white stripes. They have a lot of gradient in them, a lot of dimension, and I really like that. I don't like things that are completely perfect. Then I've put a seam all along the edges of this piece of fabric. I didn't even bother to double this up. So you can see there's the back. But I put a seam all the way around and then I simply frayed up into the seam. I really like this effect. While using fabric to make decorative rugs for your porch is cheap, easy, and fun, you have to take additional steps because it's simply fabric sitting on your tile, your concrete, your entryway, whatever. I've simply put down lines of glue. This gives just enough traction so that the rug isn't gonna slip when somebody walks on it. Adding the weight of the actual doormat will help hold it down too. I don't do any more than this because as you can see, my poured concrete is textured to look like wood so there's already a lot of texture in there that will simply grab onto these strips of glue. But if you have perhaps brushed concrete or a tile entryway, I would recommend probably putting down just a little more glue. Welcome to my incredibly messy makerspace in the garage. I do wanna get around to organizing and shining this room up a little bit, but that's for another video. What we're gonna do right now is I've taken this old, kind of beat up cracked terracotta pot that we use basically to hold open the back door, the back gate when we're taking in and out the garbage bins. I'm simply going to paint it with some exterior paint that I got at Lowe's. I did mix in some chalk compound because it was for painting furniture. Again, I'll make another awesome video on that later. When I put this pot out first, when I was just setting things up, there wasn't enough contrast and I really want things to pop. A simple thing that you can do is paint. Paint is cheap. 
paint can solve a world of problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap some paint on this and then put it back in its staging place. All right, this old busted down pot has now been transformed into this beautiful mossy green color. You can see here our pot, all my rats up here, they've all been hot glued onto their surfaces. I even have this cute little guy who's running up the leg of the table. I like to have a lot of movement in things that I do and set up. So of course this is natural that he'd be running up. Our front entry is almost complete. We simply need to make the custom doormat, which Mrs. Whiskey and I will be working on later tonight. Welcome to our evening crafts and cocktail session. I actually have a couple guests with me tonight. Sweet Pea here, and then this is Mrs. Whiskey. We're actually not doing cocktails tonight. We're doing two different types of wine. We've got Pinot Grigio and we have a Stella Rosa Black. So that's what we're gonna be drinking tonight. We're gonna be making DIY doormats from kylamakes.com. We ordered the Poyer mats from Amazon, as well as the vinyl. Mrs. Whiskey was nice enough to pick up the outdoor paint, as well as the stencil brushes for us from Hobby Lobby. I'll put all the links below for things that you need. Funny story about Mrs. Whiskey. We met 13 years ago at Mops. She actually had been living across the street from me for about three years. I had no idea. But it wasn't because that wasn't observant. She would get in and out of her SUV inside her garage and they have extremely dark tinted windows. It wasn't until the mailman got our mail mixed up one day and I got a piece of mail that said, Mrs. Whiskey. I was like, really? Is that my friend from Mops? So I send her a message via Facebook and lo and behold it is her and she's been right across the street for three plus years now. But now we get together and we drink and we do book clubs and we craft. All right, here is the stencil. You're doing a stencil, you've got to completely switch your thinking around, as Miss Whiskey had to try to do. You have to remove the letters from the vinyl instead of taking the negative space off. The other thing about this vinyl, you can't use just any vinyl when you're making a stencil. It's got to be low-tack vinyl, correct? All right. <laughs> so you're going to want to know where you want it kind of. So when we do take it off, we got to work with it quickly so it doesn't bunch up and get all stuck to each other. Okay. So if that's kind of where you want it. I think so. My suggestion agree? would be for you to hold the bottom. I'll hold here. And I will peel. You know what I mean? Like under going backwards and yes. attach and then as we'll you hold the top and then pull yep. the bottom. I think that's the best way to go. We'll find out. Teamwork, people, teamwork. You have to have friends to do this craft. Whenever you're stenciling, you want to make sure you get brushes that are flat because you're actually going to be dabbing your paint into the surface. So, so what you're, you're going to want to do is you want to get load up your brush and just kind of like dab it into the bristles. You see how that's to show the people. <laughs> All right, so I've got it fairly well loaded. You don't want too much paint to start with. And I'm actually going to start here on the T just because it looks a little easier. And you want your brush to be saturated enough that you can get into the fibers of the player, but not so much that it's going to go under your stencil or all over the top of the vinyl. I'll we'll probably go over these a couple of times too. Okay, got it? Let's do it. The wired ribbon that I ordered from Amazon weeks ago has finally arrived. Now I can just wind it into my garland at the front door and be done with this project. Thanks for checking out my very first YouTube video. I hope watching was as much fun as I had completing the project and creating this video. It definitely helped me cope with being in quarantine. If you like the garland or the doormats, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment about which craft you liked best. You could be the lucky winner and receive one of my projects in your mail. On November 7th, I'll be selecting two subscribers to share in the wealth. Thank <laughs> you.